All right. Well, what's up, everybody? I'm here with the savage himself, Alan Babic. Um, Alan is a Croatian professional boxer, uh, one of the most exciting boxers to watch with his all out style. Uh, he holds a professional undefeated record of 11 wins and zero losses with 10 knockouts. And he'll fight in April for the Bridger weight title. In this episode, we're going to hear from the savage himself. Alan, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank you, brother. And this is a very good intro. Thank you yeah. very much. I appreciate it. As my, as my main guy, you know, you're just going to talk, this is savage. And you want to talk all that. <laughs> <laughs> I, love it, I, like, I like your channel, actually. I watch a lot of your channel and stuff. And I all like right. it. That's why I said, okay. On this, I because I see, you, I see you're smart. You know, I don't I like to talk to stupid people. I don't have to anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, we'll see after the interview if you still think I'm smart or not, but, but hopefully. Uh, um, well, Alan, can you tell us a little bit um, sort of about your childhood, you know, sort of before your boxing career started? You grew up in Rovin, right? Rovin, Rovin. Yes, Rovin. Yeah, my childhood was very ordinary, you know, uh, very boring, very, I see it as a dark you know, I wasn't really popular at school. Not, not even close as being a, I don't know, athletic, this athletic guy that I am right now. You know, so I was everything opposite of what you see right now. So hmm. really, I I didn't really go anywhere. I could have, I could have been only a barman because that's the only thing you can do in Rovin. You can't do much. You can work for Maestra and <laughs> and be barman. You know, be maybe some small small time boss of those barman stuff. So I wasn't interested in that. So I was really lost because I didn't have didn't have a way to go. I didn't find myself in Rovin. Never. I love it. It's the most beautiful city in the world. But I could never imagine myself living there. So one day I was working this stupid ass job. I was a security. I was I was uh, looking after a hotel. Can you imagine how stupid the job must be? I was just there. I do, I didn't even know what is my job there. I was just walking around the woods of that hotel, you know, waiting if some dog is going to shit so I can tell them, don't do that here. <laughs> so it's really, really depressing, you know. And I work 12-hour uh, shifts, so I didn't have much of life. And then one day, uh, one old woman, uh, not old, one woman in, in her middle ages came to me and said, why why don't you do something with your life? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what. What can I do? I don't want to be a bartender. He, she told me, go go be a security guy. You can meet some nice ladies there. And I was like, okay. I was big, you know, I was big. When I, was, I was always around 90, 100 kilos. It's a big guy big bold guy so she saw a security guy in me and on on her word i go to rieka i moved to rieka with nothing i said to my mother bye bye she was like oh son where are you going i said i don't want to be here you know i was 19 years old already so i was late i was late for everything i was just about to turn 20 and then i went to rieka and there i fell in love with the boxing I don't even know how it happened. I was in MMA before. I don't even know how it happened, but I, I believe in fate, you know. Mm -hmm. And boxing was always going to be my fate. And I now I see it. But I, I saw it even then, even though I didn't have nothing. So I saw boxing as my way out, you know. And when I saw it, I stuck to it. I really stuck to it. It was bad. For many years, it was nothing. I was winning everything by knockout, everybody. But everybody was against me, and uh, it wasn't good. The first two or three years were very shitty, you know. So I had to go through that, just like I had to go through my whole life. I they didn't want me there, you know. In school, I wasn't popular because I did I didn't like school, and the school didn't like me back. So I didn't felt needed. I didn't felt wanted there, you know. The, the same thing happened in boxing. They didn't want me there, but I, I said. Well, I'm here. What you gonna do about it? You know, I was I was searching for a Spartan way out. You know, somebody to kill me in the ring if they must. Mm -hmm. Do that. I don't care. I'm not leaving. And I just said I'm not gonna leave. 
and I stuck to my word. You know? Huh? Is that what led to? I mean, because the savage is your nickname, but it kind of feels like it's more than a a nickname. You know that it's like a a part of you. No, it's more than a nickname for me. I, I always felt something. I always felt felt something in in me, you know, something different. So, and Dylan White gave me that that nickname very late, late after ten years of boxing. I just got the nickname Savage, but I recognized it. I said, "Okay, that's it." You know, the Savage was with me all of these years, and last night. My resting heart was uh, heart rate was 36. So I'm telling you, something is wrong with me. I go into extremes. I go to extreme high and extreme lows. So I love, I love it. I love the old the extremes, and I just take it now. You know, now I'm used to it. My life is never gonna be boring, like I want it to be. It's never gonna be dull. Maybe when I got kids and stuff, when I leave all this behind, but. I don't even want to leave it now. I'm so used to it. Mm -hmm. you, that lady that you mentioned, uh, who told you, you know, at the hotel to get a different job. Did you ever find her again, or find out who she was? Of course, of course. I'm still, I'm still in good relationship, but we don't, uh, we don't have numbers or stuff. So we, we weren't even close. You know, she was just a lady who worked at the same hotel that I worked in. So uh -huh. can you imagine that huh. me and her. Something the same way doesn't have any sense. So she was just a just a lady sent by by gods by Odin. I don't know who, but I believe somebody sent her because she told me that with such strength that I still remember. It. Go do something with your life, you know. You're a big guy. You're strong. And I was like, oh God, maybe I should do it. And that's the only thing I needed. Now, kids need uh, promises, money blah 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 everything i just need a word i just need one word that one lady changed my life because i was ready to change my life i just needed somebody to push me my mother loved me too much and she still do so she didn't want to let me out she just wanted me to be with her her whole life you know so that lady really really made me question everything huh well you're speaking of people you know who push you and mentors, I know Dillian White for you is a is a big mentor. Um, how did that relationship start with him, with you and him? Yeah, well, after all of that, uh, I went into the boxing depression of <laughs> ten years of amateur uh, career. I had maybe eight, eight or nine years of amateur career, and it was, it was I was still broke. After nine years, I was already twenty seven or eight. I don't even know the years anymore. So I was eight years in. I, I started boxing 20. So yeah, I was 28. So I was already 28 and still didn't have nothing. So I was starting to wonder, now is this the right path? Did I choose the right way? Because I can't help my mother, which I always wanted. I can't help my sister, which is growing up. So you know, I don't feel like a man. You know, I, I got to be a provider. I was raised that way that i'm the man in the house i'm the provider it's all up to me you know i don't fucking share expenses with my girl no i i do all the time things that i accepted so and then one time when i was at the lowest of my life i get a call from diakovic you know him from from ksw even diakovic uh sounds familiar no, it's very familiar because he had uh, Roberto Soldic, his fighter. Uh, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Lot of lot of Croatian fighters. He's in Germany. I was in Germany sparring this Ajit Kabayel, who is now a champion, European champion. And I was sparring him, and I was very good. And he saw me sparring. He told me, "Hey, do you need a job? You know, I know where you can get money for sparring." And I was like, "Yeah, bro, <laughs> you know, because I worked for maybe forty euros a night." And wow. that week of sparring was 500 euros. That was un un unknown to me, that much money. So I said, just call me. And he did, like, after maybe three weeks of that camp, I, I already forgot about him. He called me, hey, Dylan White needs a sparring. It's 500 pounds a week. I said, okay, let's go. You know, I went in against Dillian White who was 120 something kilos. I had 88 kilos. Wow. 
that's that's how we met on the second day I was there. We had a sparring. It was one of the best sparrings I ever did in my life. And he liked that, obviously. And he said, I'm going to manage you. And I was like, what are you talking about? What does that mean? I didn't even know. I was an amateur boxer, not a professional. He thought I was professional, like fully fledged professional. I was like, no, I'm a cruiser. And I, oh, he was like, oh, God. So it all happened so fast. And uh, literally 20 days of uh, Dillian White camp, I already had two fights for Matchroom. So my story started there. You know, all all in, all in happened in 20 days, three weeks. It's crazy. Wow. So within a month, you already had two fights? Yeah, two fights for Matchroom. Not just mm -hmm. two fights. I had a fight at the O2 Arena. So that alone was enough for me. If I never did a single fight, I would be happy, you know, uh -huh. <laughs> because I didn't know much. I didn't know, but now I want it all, but I didn't know better then. So if I didn't have a single fight after these two fights, I would be happy. I did a fight in Rome, in the Colosseum for Metrum, and in O2 Arena of London. So And it was both uh, first-round knockouts, so that was enough for me. <laughs> huh. Well, you fought a couple times in the O2 Arena, right, in, in London. Yeah, many times. I fought fighting five, four or five fights in O2 Arena. What's Crazy. it like? What's it like, the atmosphere there for you? Because I know you have a big fan base, too, in England now because of that. Yeah, my 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 station is in the UK. You know, UK, I always say Savage is born in UK. You know, Allen is born in Croatia and did all to become the Savage, but Savage was born in the UK because they gave me the shot. You know, Croatia didn't give me a shot. Croatia didn't want me in the amateur circles let alone professionals. So UK really give me a shot. They put me out there and they just show me there like like like, like a baby in a wildness, you know. And and I, I managed I managed pretty good. And it was easy for me, you know, it just it, that persona of Savage just came out and I was so truthful to myself and to everybody and people recognize that and got behind me you know my search army is growing by the day and now we're here you know? mm -hmm. well you even you even was that in the uk you sparred with uh tyson fury you were training with him in his camp for a little bit yeah of course that was my second to last camp i was tyson fury and lawrence okoli camps in like span of three months so i was with tyson fury in morecambe that was near manchester Mm -hmm. So it was very good experience. I sparred Tyson Fury many rounds. We did yeah. five rounds uh, four times a week. He wanted to do four times a week, so sometimes he did three, sometimes four, sometimes two. So we did many rounds. Wow. And how does it feel sparring him? Can you tell? I mean, does he feel like that's why he's the heavyweight champion? You know, you is he? he's really tall. I know a lot taller than maybe some of the other people you've fought. I mean, what's what's so special about him? I guess I'm asking. Exactly, that is exactly the question. Because if you ask now, I don't know. But when I'm near him, I can feel it. I know he's special. You know, I know he's special, and I know he is in the in the in the highs of Muhammad Ali, literally. And I was the first guy who said, oh, "Who is this guy? So if you don't mention your name next to Ali's." I'm I'm a nostalgic boxing nostalgia, you know. So, but when I met him, when I see how people, uh, uh, people act near him and stuff, I said, okay, I know now. He's a true champion, true champion, you know. Mm -hmm. He's a, he's really a true champion, and I I'm happy now to call him my friend because we we are good friends now. He seems like he's a good guy outside of the ring, also. He's a really good guy. Can you imagine me? Coming, me and my friend Marco Milun, amateur boxer, coming into Morecambe, and you see Tyson Fury yelling at the at the middle of the street, "Hey, Savage!" <laughs> like, who is this? Is this Tyson Fury yelling in the middle of the street? My name is crazy. And he told me he was my fan. I'm like, what you talking about? <laughs> it's, it's crazy to even talk about it. You know, he's my fan. No, I'm your fan. So we 
we got into the fight. Who is his, who is whose friend, a fan? Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, to have Tyson Fury say he's a fan of you. That's awesome. Um, and he told me he told me I will be world champion. He told me for sure. He was circle, and I was like, bro, did you just say that? He was like, no, no, I mean it. We were we were just going into the bath. So it was weird, but he told me we're the world champion, you know. I say okay. <laughs> I didn't even have fight. So, uh -huh. you no, know, I wasn't supposed to have a fight for world champion next. So it's crazy how it all played out. Yeah. Well you have now you have a title fight with um what's it Lucas Rosansky. 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 Uh yeah, it's a oh, sorry. Tell it, tell it. <laughs> How have you been preparing for that? Because I, I box a little bit at uh, Tristo Gym in, in Zagreb. I don't know if you know that one. Yeah, of course. And, and yeah. You know, I do sparring maybe once a week, but I know you do a lot of sparring, you know, a lot of uh, all days of the week almost, it seems like. What's your training camp now look like? Yeah. Sparring was yesterday and tomorrow I had another, I have another 10 hours. So listen, everybody says I spar a lot. Well, boxing is my life. Boxing is my life, and I have this. You saw the heart rates and stuff, mm -hmm. and I show to people that when I run, I get higher high heart rate than, than when I box because it's so easy for me. It comes natural for me. Fighting, sparring is is so natural to me. It's like walking to somebody else. So I really don't don't uh, live it like you guys do. You know? Like when somebody see me from a side. I look like a freak. I, I can spar 20 rounds. But for me, it comes easy. I just do it. It's like brushing your teeth. I can't explain it. It's the easiest training I ever done in my life is sparring. It's the easiest training for me. So you and enjoy I, it. I go to some, what? You enjoy it. It's, it's not work yeah. for you. Yeah, it's a dance for me. I dance. I, the only time I look good is in sparring. That, that's where I, I look like I know how to dance. My girl said, I thought you know how to dance. No, I never danced and I, I don't know. I'm not nimble. I'm not nice moves. I only look good in sparring. You know? I look good in boxing. You know, that, that's who I become. Boxing is part of me. Yeah, so it, if she takes you over to Club Diamond in Liwoski, you won't bust out any dance moves over there? <laughs> Yeah, I'm afraid not. I, I think I'm done with club, bro. I've been, I've been a bouncer for 10 years. So it's over my head. I don't want to be in a nightclub in my life. I really don't. I don't, I don't hate it. I, I loved what I do. I did it professionally most of the time. But I, I would never do it again. I don't know how I managed. I do know that I went to the fights... Uh, directly from the night shifts. I was still smelly and I was all, you know, I smell on cigarettes and stuff. I was never a smoker, but I was in that company, so you smell like them. And I I, I went to the to the fights drunk also <laughs> after, the, after the night shift, so I really drew, been through hell and back in, in that kind of... So that's why I don't want to go to nightclubs ever again. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you've outgrown that phase, and you know you're moving on towards bigger and better things than than that. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Are you tired of feeling like a stranger in your own home? Do you long for a sense of belonging and community? Then it's time to consider becoming a citizen of Croatia. With Citizen HR, the Croatian citizenship app, you can make this dream a reality. At Citizen HR, we understand the emotional weight of citizenship. We know it's not just a piece of paper, it's a feeling of belonging to a community, a sense of security, and a connection to your heritage. That's why we've made it our mission to make the process of becoming a Croatian citizen as smooth and stress-free as possible. With Citizen HR, you'll have access to experts who will guide you every step of the way. From filling out forms to answering questions, we'll be there to make sure you have everything you need to apply for your citizenship. One user on the App Store, Kate KC, said, easy to use and great selection of experts available, and gave us five stars. So, if you're ready to take the next step towards citizenship and to find a sense of belonging and security in Croatia, download Citizen HR today. Because at Citizen HR, we believe that citizenship is more than just a legal status. It's a feeling of home. So what are you waiting for? 
head over to www.citizenhr.app today. Use the code ALLTHINGSCROATIA for 50% off any biography translations you order. Um, what, what do you think of, like, mentally speaking, you know, when you're late in the round, like your last fight, you know, when you went, um, when you're in the late rounds, the championship rounds, and you're tired, you know, at it, you know, you don't want to give up, but you know, your body's tired and everything like that. What do you think of mentally that, that keeps you going? Well, you don't really know. That's, that's what I said. My last fight, it was really heroic when I look at it now, but I didn't feel it like it because to, to, to quit, it's much harder for me than to just keep going. I'm used to it. I'm used to it. I, I just keep going. It's so much easier than quitting for me. If I quit, I know I will, I will kill myself. I will destroy my mentality completely because that's all I have. I'm not going to quit. You're going to knock me out. You, of course you can knock me out. Rosansky can knock me out. But you got to do it. You know, it, it's one thing to say it. It's the other thing to be uh, capable, to be uh, a probability, which it is. But you got to do it. Knock me out. Uh, like I said, for Molina fight, you saw it. Knock me out! Like I want, I want to be knocked out. I, I, I'm, I'm telling everybody. Of course, I'm gonna be knocked out. My style is crazy. My style is not safe. <laughs> no, my style is absolutely crazy, and I'm crazy. When I'm in the ring, I'm afraid of myself. I am afraid of the savage. When I'm in the ring, especially in those later rounds, I don't want to be there. Of course, I don't. I I think I'm smart enough to know what's good for me and stuff. So I would rather be on the Ljubuški, on the river. How's it called? The the, the Taishi River. The Kocha. 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 I love Kocha. Oh God, I, I was in that river every day, ten yeah. times. It's like eight degrees. Yeah, so I would I rather see. be there. I would rather be there enjoying my life, having babies. I put the whole of my life on hold. I put everything on hold. I can't hold it anymore. I can't. My 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 girlfriend has needs. She wants to be a woman. <laughs> you know, I gotta make her a woman. So, no, my life will not wait for my boxing. No, as long as I would like, I would like it to wait to live like this for another ten years. I can't. You know, so that mentality is probably gonna change. I I don't say I'm gonna be like this when I'm fifty years old because I'm not. I'm not stupid. I'm, somebody's going to kill me. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be killed. I want to live. The life is beautiful. Now, I wanted to die before. <laughs> now, now. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I want them to use me like I'm, when I'm like this. Use me. Give me as much fight as possible. I'm still in that shape. My head is still in that place. Fucked. My head is fucked. Doesn't want to stop. It wants all the wars. Hmm. Do you have an idea of when, like in a three years or two years or something, five years, that that's going to be time? Or are you just going to feel when it feels like it's time to, to leave? Well, I said, it, I said it to myself. I was, I gave eight years of life to boxing. You know, eight years of hard life, very, very bad life and uh, poor life. So I want to give myself another eight years of good life. Hmm. And I've already lived three and a half of those years. So I think I have little less than five years left. I hold my full. I'm talking about a full tank. After mm -hmm. that, I can do fights. I, I don't care. You know, I don't care. Believe me. You know, these guys don't, don't, don't want to fight. I don't care. I need two weeks to get ready and I'm fighting. You know, I'm fighting is my second nature. You know, how can I say I'm not ready? Of course I'm ready. That's my nature. It's fighting. Oh. When you walk or do uh, skiing or do shadow box, I fight. It's the same for me. So, you know, I can't wait to be at that stage where I can't, where I don't have to prove nothing. I already proved everything in my life that I wanted to prove, but, you know, there are still doubters. I got to take this title, then I got to take the real title, as I say. You know, there are always doubters. So, doubters keep me going. I want to prove them wrong, mm -hmm. but I will come. I will come to that stage where I will say, "Fuck it, I will not train. I will just par and I will fight." That's what I want. <laughs> That's the ultimate goal. 
Because uh-huh. I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna stop. When I have five kids, I want five kids. When I have all that, when I have a house, of course I'm gonna have a boxing gym in my house. Of course I'm gonna have the ring. What do you think I'm gonna do there? I'm not gonna pray in the ring. I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna let them kick my stupid head every day because <laughs> I can't live without it. You know. Mm. Will you teach them your same style or maybe a more uh, a protective style? Oh, my kids, no, I don't think I'm going to let them to be in boxing. But no. listen, you got to be you gotta be poor to be a boxer. Boxing is a poor man's sport. Remember that first. There are no, there are no rich champions. Not even today, where, where even everybody's rich. No, back in the day, the night is, it wasn't like that. No, we are poor as fuck. I <laughs> mean, all my friends. So boxing is a poor man's sport. Hmm. Just remember that the only, the only truth. So if my kids are growing up in a palace, I'm gonna I'll do everything for them. They're gonna grow up. I'm gonna buy them a unicorn. You can't be a boxer like that. You know, it's it's tough. If they wanna, of course, I'm gonna teach you. But you know, like Tyson said, you go to private school. You wanna be a boxer? Go, go away. <laughs> Don't talk rubbish. <laughs> I have some questions about uh, Tyson, but before that, I just want to ask, um, what do you think about, you know, Jake Paul and sort of those internet boxers? Do you think that's good for boxing? Is it interesting to you? Yeah, I, I met uh, Jake Paul this this camp. I was with him in Kamani Club in Dubai. And I know Tommy Fury, of course. And uh, at least I was one of those guys who said, you know, fuck Jake Paul, uh, get out of boxing and stuff. But then I changed. I changed because he does a lot of good things. He does a lot of good things for boxing. And he brought in a whole new era of fans to my to my sport. Mm. So he only made boxing bigger, not smaller. And boxing has have someone to blame now. They all blame Jake Paul. So boxing needs that. Boxing is a very controversial sport. And yeah. it needs to have the bad guys. And he's a bad guy. And he said, I think he's very smart. I think he knows what he's doing. And at the end of the day, the fight was good with him, with him and Tom Fury. <laughs> the fight was very, very good, you know. I don't even know who won. He was very dangerous at some point. So, you know, you know just listen, I met the guy, the Jack Paul guy. And he has a boxing nose already. And I was like, what is this? This, this guy is not joking. He's truly sparring. His face is all messed up. <laughs> you know, he is boxing those. You can see he's uh, not strong like me. You know, I, my head is done. But he is like a soft, he has a soft head. But you can see boxing features on it. You know, it, it's weird. I look at him and I said, this guy is not joking. This guy is sparring for real. You know? Huh? He's a real he deal. Blood every every single session, he has blood on him. It, hmm. It's weird for somebody of that kind of status and money to go into this sport. So I respect that. You know? Now I respect it. Hmm. Nice, nice. A good answer. Yeah. Um, I agree. For me, also, I used to be, you know, who is this guy causing all this drama and stuff? But lately, it seems like he, he really wants to to prove himself and to to train the right way and be the best. So, I mean, props to him. There is obviously the market for it because he's like in top five <laughs> fights in the whole world. He, yeah. his, his brother and stuff. So it's crazy, crazy numbers. They do crazy numbers. Even mm-hmm. him, Tommy Fury. Tommy Fury is just a novice in the, the boxing. Nobody look at Tommy Fury. And he fights Jake Paul, he get like 70... Uh, 700,000 views or something. I don't know. Pay-per-views, yeah. Like wow. almost a million pay-per-views. It's crazy. It's crazy numbers. Crazy. That's Oscar De La Hoya number. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, speaking of other other boxers, you know, back in the day, I wanted to ask you, who's your, your top five all-time boxers? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, let's feel let's like this. Well, are we just looking at boxing or, or all, all, all around boxers? Like uh, Muhammad Ali is number one if you look at everything. But Joe Louis is number one if you look at only boxing for me. 
No, mm -hmm. there's a difference. I mean, listen, listen. I, I always say to people, people ask me that question is, you have, you got to look at it. At the, if if you want to look at all of the things, then I'm going to say Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson because they made most for boxing and they're most known names in the world of boxing. You know, but, but if you're talking about boxing ability, I'm going to say Joe Louis, Sugar Ray Robinson. So it's a whole different, you know, uh, so what you want. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it's different ways to look at it. Um, I don't know. I now that's a tough question for me to to think to ask you. <laughs> you spun it around onto me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's two different profiles. It's, it's top tens, but it's two different guys. Mm -hmm. You know, it, because these top tens can never be these top tens, and these top tens can never be this. It's it's crazy. Okay, but listen, I'm... you have you have great, you have great. So let's let's talk about greats then. The greatest boxers. So first, first great boxer was Joe Louis. Let's say like that. He boxed way, way, way before uh, he was in the yeah Second World War kind of era. Joe Louis. Before him, you have Rocky Marcia, Jock Johnson. I mean, we can we can go like this. It's too tough for a question. I, I can now tell you fifty names. That should be number one. Sugar Ray Robinson is the guy that everybody puts at number one. You know, the old the old mongoose, of course. Uh, different. Give me a different, more specific question. Okay, okay. <laughs> My head starts to. <laughs> All right. How about this? Who's your favorite to watch highlights of? Oh. Is that easier or harder? <laughs> I, yeah, but I love boxing. So, okay, let's do it like this. My favorite highlights of all time is Joe Frazier. Mm. He's my favorite guy. He's my go-to guy. But when I explain boxing to you or maybe somebody else, I will show you Roberto Duran. I will show you the knockouts of Tony uh, the Hawk Jackson, uh, Jack the Hawk Jackson. So I'll, I'll show you lots of things. And again, my, my mind is spinning of so many possibilities. But yeah, let's say Roberto Duran, Mike Tyson is there, but for me, it's not in top 10 of mine. Now, Joe Lewis, wow, I like to watch Joe Lewis. It's called the one video, The Punching Perfection. Just mm -hmm. watch it. It's going to be it's crazy. Resnick, Resnick made it on YouTube. Joe Lewis, uh, Muhammad Ali, Oscar Bonavena had crazy, crazy knockout reels. Max Schmeling was, was tough, you know, so many guys, so many guys. I watched J James J. Braddock, guys you didn't even heard of. Uh, you know, that was the guy, you know, so I watch uh, Archie Moore, the old Mongols, like I said, and I watch Joe Fraser, of course, Julian the Hawk Jackson. Yeah. Oh, I like to watch Ike Babucci, the president. Did you hear about him? I don't think Ike so. Ike Babucci. No. It's crazy. Crazy. David Tua. You know David Tua? Yeah, yeah. From like New Zealand or... Aiki Babucci. Yeah, Aiki Babucci beat David Tua when yeah. he was in his prime. It's cool. So yeah, so I have, I have a lot of stories like this. So I got lost. I get lost in all those stories. You know, I have many stories. Yeah, well, I asked you... A... Alexis Arguello, God. I asked you a tough question to answer. I'll give you an easier one. Yeah. Easier one now as we're, you know, come down to the end here of the, the podcast. I want to thank you, first of all, Alan, for coming on the podcast. You know, it's been an honor to have you on. Really cool talking to you. I, two easy questions. Um, favorite food? Ooh, favorite food, let's say. You know what? I just met my favorite food in Dubai, Atsai, Akai. How do you call it? Ah, the Do you know, acai. A acai, like the yeah, yeah acai. Berry. Acai bowls, acai bowls, like ah. like bowl. Oh, oh, I love it. Now that's my favorite food. <laughs> I like pizza. I like pizza. I like acai. I like ice cream. <laughs> that's my three favorite foods. <laughs> and then, uh, favorite movie. Uh 
Jackson. Got me a movie I watched a million times, The Gladiator. Mm. That was my walkout music. It was my dream to have a walkout music of The Gladiator song, and I did that also. That was one of my dreams checked. Yeah, The Gladiator. I love I love the all of the Rocky movies, of course. I watch them like a million times. Uh, those kind of movies, old school movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the Rockies are a classic. I love uh, the one with Mr. T is my favorite. I think that's the second one. I forget. Oh, God. I watched that like a million times. <laughs> Mr. T. Uh, and I, I really, I, I, I could, Mr. T is closer to me than the Rocky, actually. So first time I saw it, I was like, this guy is good. I like this guy, you know, so I want to be like him. So I am more of a Mr. T kind of guy than Rocky. <laughs> so, because so Rocky guy. is a golden child. Yeah, Rocky is a golden child. You know, he had it. Like he's a white kid in boxing. Mr. T was, was, was you know, you know everything underdog. He's a big underdog and made it for himself. So I love Mr. T also. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, he was a great character. Um, Alan, I want to thank you again so much for coming on. And then just real quick as we go, do you have a prediction for your, your title fight, how it's going to end? Oh, well, yeah, I think it's going to be a knockout. It can be knockout either way, but I predict a knockout in round, uh, let's say, five. Hmm. I don't see it going to, to round six. I really don't because his style is crazy. My style is crazy here. He's strong. I'm stronger. You know, he had, uh, I don't know what, like 85% knockouts. I have 90% knockouts. So I really don't think it's going to go to the end. I really mm -hmm. think it's going to be a knockout. Well, yeah, it's, it's going to be an exciting fight. I'm looking forward to it and, and wishing you all the best. Nice speaking to you. Peace. All right.